We talk about performance online. We frequently talk about two aspects of internet performance. Those aspects are bandwidth and latency. Let's look at what those are. Uh, easiest way to do this is to run a speed test. Um, the probably the most power, uh, you know, popular is this UCLA Global Broadband Speed Test. Some of you guys may have used this before, um, but let's run one from inside my office and see what happens. Um, okay, so. Website loads up, says begin test. Let me see if I can make this as big as possible so it's visible, okay? Um, you'll notice something interesting, which is that the site has a, some general idea of where I am. This is Western New York, and one of the things that speed test tries to do is to use a server to test with that's close to you. That avoids lots of bottlenecks that are possible on the internet. Really the goal of these speed testing programs is to test edge communication properties. Remember, the core of the internet is very fast. Usually your bottleneck is close to the edge of the internet. This is the last mile problem. So usually your bottleneck is your internet service provider or your campus internet provider or whatever. Um, so by choosing a server close to you, speed test programs avoid locating other bottlenecks that might be out there on the internet and can hone in on what's happening to you. Now this also means that if you want to run a program like this, the you know, speed test requires servers that are part of your system that are located around the world. So there's a little bit of, you know, you give them some credit here. There's a little bit of work you have to do to get this to work. All right, so let's hit begin test. Um, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to try to select the best server based on running the ping test. So it's looking for a server that's nearby that I have a low latency connection with. Um, and then what it does is it runs a ping test and then it's going to start to test my download speed. So the ping test here completed, I don't know if you can see this, in 23 milliseconds. That's pretty good. Um, the download speed looks like I'm getting about... Uh, 30 meg megabits per second, that's uh, pr pretty good. Upload speed, so this is actually pretty interesting. Um, my upload bandwidth is way better than my download bandwidth here. I don't know why that is. That may be because of some sort of traffic shaping that the University of Buffalo is doing on their own network. This is very unusual. Normally, it's the opposite. Normally, internet service providers set up their networks to provide more download bandwidth to clients than upload bandwidth. If you run this at home, if I ran this at my house, I would probably get uh, the opposite result. So I would get um, much higher download bandwidth than upload bandwidth. And that reflects the fact that people spend a lot more time downloading things uh, than they do upload. Um, so this is, you know, so the upload speed, download speed, I got about 29 megabits per second. Upload speed, I got about uh, 37 megabits per second. So again, that's a, that's a pretty unusual result. So there are, and there are two characteristics of internet performance that are being tested here. One is latency. Latency is how fast does a packet move across the internet from one place to another. 23 milliseconds, now that may not seem like very long, but just to put that in context, the amount of time it takes light to circle the Earth is about 100 milliseconds. And this is to a server in Toronto. So this latency number, you know, uh, there are lots of things that slow down packets online. The speed of light is not one of them. Um, the download and upload numbers are, are, I think, pretty characteristic of me being here at UB, uh, located on a campus network that has a fair amount of available bandwidth. So we talk about internet performance, we talk about latency, we talk about bandwidth. Bandwidth is how fast can I move data across the network. Latency is how long does it take one packet to, that's sent from my computer to reach some other computer. Depending on your application, both bandwidth and latency can be important. If I'm trying to transfer a large file, I care a lot about bandwidth, but not as much about latency. If I'm using something like a chat application, I care a lot about latency because I'm not sending much data. Each message is pretty small, but if there's a lot of latency between me and the person that I'm chatting with, it gets very difficult to communicate because, you know, I'm writing something and I'm not sure if they've replied and they actually have replied, but it's taken a long time to get to me. So two components of internet performance, bandwidth, latency, measure them both at uh, speedtest.net. I am not a paid spokesman of, uh, for UCLA, but they do uh, run a very useful tool. You can also run this on your phone. Uh, you can run this at home. So I would encourage you, get, uh, you know, take this tool um, and try it out. Try it on your phone, try it on your laptop, try it on your desktop, try it in a couple different locations. Uh, try it on you know, UB's wireless network, try it on UB's wired network, try it in your dorm, try it at your parents' house. Uh, um, get a sense of how uh, internet uh, properties vary uh, across the world.